And so member Tibbs, buenos dias. Hey, Rafael. Como estas? Todo bien, how you doing? Muy bien. Good to see you too. Just... <laughs> riding your bike around yeah yeah for the most part that's good yeah what have you been up to lately are you still uh working with um rio ray over at salvation yeah. army <laughs> i'm the chair now of the advisory hey, congrats yeah yikes i've been part of it for that's seven years but you know i backed off being chair several times it's yeah. just a lot of responsibility. Um, but yeah, he, he's a great guy. It's a good organization. Yeah, it is. You know, they do so much work that I don't think it's talked about enough, you know? Yeah. I mean, the amount of rental assistance you guys do is staggering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the amount of food that is given away, uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, so Victoria said she'd be about 10 minutes late. Okay. <clears throat> would you like to would you like to start? Sure. Okay, I'll call this meeting of the uh, uh, downtown subcommittee to order. Um, and so here's a little disclosure for due to COVID-19 for anybody who's watching. Due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders N-25-20 and N-29-20, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officer of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the downtown subcommittee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Committee members and staff are participating from remote locations and are practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meetings as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three public comment or during our public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature uh, or pressing star nine on their phone. Then by giving then and they will then be given the ability to address the committee. Okay. Um, shall we take roll? Uh, yes, uh, Council Member Tibbetts. Present. Uh, Council Member Sawyer. Here. And Council Member Fleming will be joining um, in the next 10 minutes or so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, um, so we'll move on to item three, public comments. Uh, so for any members of the public attending, if you would wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker will have three minutes and a countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you are invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. Um, do we have any public members of the public wishing to speak? There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, no raised hands at this time. So I'll move on to uh, and do we also have, sorry, any comments via voicemail or email? No, we have, we do not have any comments um, for voicemail or email. Okay, thank you. Item four, new business. Um, so it looks like I will bring up, should we bring up the presentation? Is that what we're on now, the bollards? Um, the first um, item is the um, update from the Railroad Square Association. Or would you prefer to start? Okay. Great, let's do that. Uh, Chris, if you would test your audio, please. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Let, let me go ahead and, uh, uh, wait one second. Let me jump in first. Okay, I apologize. Okay. All right. So, well, uh, good morning, uh, Chair Tibbs, and welcome to the Downtown Subcommittee. We're very delighted to have you as, as chair. Uh, you'll find that this is one of the, the, the most fun uh, subcommittees uh, that we have. <laughs> uh, just kidding. 
Uh, and then uh, good morning also to Council Member Fleming. I understand that she'll be arriving a little bit late, um, but uh, good morning, Council Member Sawyer. Uh, great to see you. And good morning to everyone joining the call this morning on this uh, very cold Thursday morning. As part of the formation uh, um, of, uh, of the Community Benefit District in Railroad Square, our division has worked closely with the Railroad Square Association to help facilitate meetings and conversations between members of our staff and corresponding departments and uh, members of the association board. Uh, most recently, there was a great discussion. This actually took place uh, uh, last week uh, regarding upgrades to Depot Park, where, which uh, we're uh, very excited about, uh, in which members from our division and parks, uh, Jen Santos, uh, participated in, uh, along with uh, the uh, Depot Park uh, uh, Railroad Square Association Committee. Um, in addition, there's been a lot of planning uh, and activities in recent months, and here to talk about that is uh, Chris Wilson, and she is the Executive Director for the Railroad Square Association. Morning. Thanks, Rafael, and uh, thank you for uh, arranging to get some of our banners that were uh, damaged in the last storm that weren't looking too good. Thank you for getting those straightened out and taken down. Yes, we've been doing uh, having a lot of meetings. Um, thank you to, I think Tim Finnegan is on this call and wanna do a shout out for the time that he's been giving us to meet with the Depot Park project and trees and things that uh, we're trying to get going in, in Railroad Square. One of our biggest projects is that we're starting first is the tree project. Um, a lot of the trees need to be replaced and at least, or at least trimmed. So we're looking and waiting for a bid now. The plan is to probably start on Fifth Street and use that as our model to, to repl ultimately replace those trees. And then we'll be moving on to Fourth Street and looking at those trees. It's a huge project, so we're waiting for bids and it will be a phased, phased project. Um, also, we've been, um, so the trees, We've put together a small marketing committee to really try to look at some other marketing opportunities planning the year, but also for right now to support our businesses to make sure that people know that we're open down there and help our businesses. You saw that Jackson's had quite a bit of damage from the last storm, uh, their tent, but they are now reopened, uh, waiting for a tent. So uh, trying to really support the businesses down there. We've met with the Hyatt, uh, the general manager from the Hyatt down there. And again, uh, Tim was gave us time to really walk around down there and help with the uh, getting rid of the homeless camp that was across the creek. But looking at the issue, the biggest issue, unfortunately, is the vandalism and the homeless issue down there. And the vandalism has really seemed to increase since New Year's at least. Um, you know, stores getting windows broken and doors jammed and um, the Hyatt has had um, a lot of issues that impact their being able to rent certain rooms because, the, it, because of the access to the Greenway. So um, working with the Hyatt and the city to try to see what we can do to help them as far as fencing and getting fencing approved through for them to protect their property and ultimately bring guests, make guests feel comfortable there. Um, let's see, um, the Greenway is a project that our president, Mike Montague, and all of us take very personally to try to, to work working with um, Steve Bennett, what's his group to help clean that up and make it more accessible for tourists and our community to be enjoying. So a lot going on, kind of just beginning a, a lot of projects. So more to follow. And again, thank you, Raphael and Tim for your support. Thank you, Chris. Um, John, do you have any questions for Chris or staff on this item? I do, thank you. I, I, just, I, and I missed part of because I had to change chairs actually. Um, the trees, um, Chris, have they, the, what are the trees that are being replaced and what type of tree are they using? That's still being decided. First of all, we have uh, waiting for a tree bid to look at the trees um, to see what, what can be done 
you know, for some of them just to be cut back and then to really assess which ones really would be better to, to remove. We can't just, we're not gonna go in and just tear them all down. And there's a couple of different trees. We do have the city list of suggested trees. So they've talked about ginkgo and um, I forget the other one, but they, ha they haven't made a, a decision. Something that maybe is a little slower growing and doesn't have such a deep root system that's tearing up the sidewalks. Yeah, because we've had such poor history with tree selection and I, you know, every, they, every once in a while they come up with a new urban tree and then the urban tree they discover has a blight and then they all die. No. So I'm just, I'm you know, taking, looking at the place of least resistance as far as a tree replacement uh, is, you know, it, it's been a real challenge downtown, especially with irrigation as well. And of course, irrigation is important. Um, but I, I just kind of, you know, it, it would be great to um, make, I, I would assume that the tree list recommended by the city has been updated um, to, uh, to, a, to deal with the realities of urban trees that have failed in the past. I think that we've probably replaced the trees downtown two or three times, um, at least twice. Um, and they're, and the, the, they're still dying. I mean, it's, we're still dealing with dead trees because they got a blight and there, we're not the only city in the state that, that dealt with that, but going um, uh, cautiously, I would, would recommend uh, because uh, ginkgo sounds like a great tree, although they do have major leaf loss uh, in, the, in the fall, which is beautiful, but also creates a, a maintenance issue. But anyway, it's, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll stop there, but it is, it, it seems like a simple, uh, there, there seem like simple answers that are not necessarily so. So thank you for that. Yes. Um, and I will make, I do have a list. I don't know if it's an updated tree list, but that, that is a concern is, is to really looking at something that is not only going to be aesthetically beautiful, isn't going to be a major maintenance problem. And then the other issue is the, the irrigation and the electrical is very old. So, yeah. you know, for Depot Park, that's definitely um, an issue. Yeah. So good point. Thank at, you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know, Victoria, are you with us? I am with you, uh, no questions, thank you very much. Okay, um, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? We have no raised hands at this time. Okay, um, shall we move on to item 4.2, Downtown Action Organization update from Candace Hinkle Allison. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, good morning, Chair Tibbetts. Nice to have you joining the downtown subcommittee. I agree with Raphael. It's a, it's a very fun group. Um, and uh, good morning, council members, uh, Sawyer and Fleming. It's nice to see you both again. It's been a while since we've met. I just wanna start by saying thank you to everyone who has been supporting our downtown businesses. City staff are uh, putting in a lot of work and we're very grateful uh, for their continued support um, and creativity as we keep working through the myriad of issues that are um, happening for all of our local businesses. It seems like uh, a long time ago since we um, talked about this, but we haven't met since winter lights ended. So I just wanted to give a quick update on that, which was that the new version went really well. You know, we, we adapted to um, kind of get with the times and uh, we got great feedback from business owners and the community who really enjoyed seeing downtown looking so festive and having activities to participate in. Um, and we did, uh, we were able to install some lighting and that's actually gonna stay up year round and kind of be our, um, we're gonna look to that as we continue working on new lighting this year as well. Just a couple of quick updates for our downtown businesses. I think everyone knows it, it continues to be a very tough time for our business owners. Thankfully, we've not had uh, any more businesses close over the holidays, so we know it's going to be a struggle for quite a while. Um, our restaurant owners are thrilled to be able to operate outdoors again, so very grateful that that, that happened a little faster than we were anticipating. Um, but other than operating under the current restrictions, the main concerns and issues that come up uh, with our business owners are really uh, dealing with uh, issues with the homeless population. 
A couple just logistical updates for the DAO. We, we did hold our annual meeting in January. Um, we completed our annual report, which is available on our website for anyone interested. At that meeting, we highlighted our priorities for the year, which are to install additional lighting, uh, powder coat uh, some of the light poles downtown, uh, like Railroad Square, establish a plan to prune and replace trees along 4th Street, and then also look into the feasibility of an ice rink in Courthouse Square for um, winter next year, this year, future years, really. Um, we also elected our board of directors. So I just wanted to share uh, the updates there. Our current board is uh, Leanna Oziello. She's a new board member. Natalie Balfour, Zach Berkowitz, Pauline Block, also a new board member. Sonu Chandi, Raisa, uh, Joe Dietzen, Charles Evans, Hugh Futrell, Caitlin Kurasek, also a new board member. Tom Robertson, Bernie Schwartz, Stephen Stankovich, also a new board member, and Peter Stanley, who's also new, and Doug Van Dyke. Uh, our executive committee will be selected at our next board meeting. We also have two new committees forming. Uh, the first is an ad hoc group to support efforts around the EIFD and the County Civic Center. And then the second is a community engagement committee, which is meant to support our businesses um, downtown with post-COVID recovery and also create regular programming for summer and winter, which will um, again, look to include the ice rink, but uh, really focus on um, what's worked for us in the past. You know, we've, we had two kind of last minute programs that we put together through Open and Out and Winter Lights. Um, what worked, what didn't, what can we look to in the future that uh, will work for the majority of our businesses and create a great opportunity for our community to come down. Um, we also had a really good meeting, I think it was just yesterday, with uh, Jason and Raisa around um, public works. And I think we've got a good plan moving forward, a couple of projects that we're going to be working on, um, but really just appreciate uh, their support talking through issues around baseline services and making sure that um, we've got kind of a clear plan for the future with uh, the work split between the DAO and the city. A uh, couple updates on what's already planned and in the works. We did have one more art installation go in. Um, hopefully you've seen it. It's along 4th Street. You wouldn't notice unless you were walking though because it's in um, some empty tree grates on the ground. So we had six mosaics installed of uh, native flowers and they're really gorgeous. So I recommend you take a stroll down 4th if you haven't seen them yet. Um, they go from the 500 block up to the 700 block. Uh, coming up soon, um, Bayside Church, who's been a really great supporter of downtown, is putting together an Easter egg hunt at businesses throughout the area. So that'll be a lot of fun for families. And we're looking forward to working with them on that. The goal is just to get families to um, stop by as many businesses as possible th throughout a couple week time span. So um, it should be a lot of fun and a great way to kind of introduce some people to the businesses that we have downtown. And uh, I'll share more details on that at our next meeting once it's kind of finalized. Uh, we also are working with California Poets and Schools to do a poetry installation in the month of April for National Poetry Month. So that's really exciting. And we just started talking with uh, both the museum and with Tara and her team about ways we can keep using downtown as a canvas to uh, both engage the community and support business. So we'll look forward to sharing more details about uh, those as we're moving forward. A uh, quick update from our Street Plus team, not much new there. They continue to dedicate most of their time to issues with the homeless population, um, especially those struggling with uh, mental health issues. We meet regularly about once a week with Catholic Charities in the city to talk through specific challenges that are occurring. And the Catholic Charities team has been great about um, coming through regularly and to trying to get to know some of the folks who are longer term residents in the downtown area. Uh, but that is where the majority of their time goes and, it, and it's um, often preventing them from doing other work. So for instance, this past week, we had a homeless individual pull um, a bunch of our plants out of the planters and throw them on the sidewalk. So it took our team a couple hours to, to pick those up and clean them up and you know, a little bit of damage from it, but ultimately you know, hours uh, wasted not uh, being proactive in their work, which is tough for them. Um, so it's definitely an ongoing frustration but want to thank Sergeant Wolf and his team for working so closely with us, especially this past week to address some of the more challenging individuals. Um, 
it, it's definitely taking uh, the support of a lot of uh, city departments to try and address this as, as best we can. So we really appreciate you working so closely with us. Uh, and then finally, a quick update on the Asawa Fountain. We are still hoping to break ground uh, soon, but don't have a date yet. So I will definitely share that. I know that's something everyone is very eager to hear about. So as soon as I have a date, I'll make sure that gets um, shared with uh, everyone here, even if it's before our next uh, meeting in March. Thanks, Candace. Any questions from council? Okay, seeing, seeing no questions, do we have any questions or comments from the public? There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, seeing no hands, um, let's move to item 4.3, the public safety update. And it looks like uh, we have Sergeant Wolf. Hello, this is uh, Sergeant Wolf. Good morning, everybody. A um, few things to update everybody on. Uh, I think I'll start with the Greenway. Uh, about a week ago, uh, we cleaned up the Greenway. There were imminent floods and the camps were in a low lying area. Um, contrary to what people may have read on the press, I just wanna take this opportunity to explain that not only was, were everyone offered beds for three days in advance, but we did get the most uh, vulnerable and sick people, some into hotel rooms, some into Sam Jones. So we did house a number of people from there. And um, uh, as we've seen before with the Greenway, in the days following the cleanup, there were a number of people that came back. We have done our best to stay on top of that, knowing the impacts that it has on the Hyatt and Railroad Square. Um, of course, with the timing being uh, contemporaneous with the rains coming in, we did see an increase at the underpasses, which some of it was from the Greenway, but most of it I believe was just the weather conditions because there weren't a lot of familiar faces from the Greenway. Um, it's been a little tough to stay on top of. Uh, as of yesterday, I know there were about eight tenths on ninth and we've had a few individuals showing up on fifth or sixth as well. Um, so that's something we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on. Uh, we're also seeing an uptick in both vehicles and some camping around the Juilliard Park area. That's not necessarily related to the Greenway. It started before uh, the Greenway, but um, we are seeing that and I'm getting reports about that as well. Uh, sharing in Cadence's frustration, downtown has picked up a bit. We've been getting reports of more campers on 4th Street. I have uh, two guys from my team who have been trying to walk it in the mornings as calls for service and time allows. And that's probably had some impact, um, but we'll do our best to keep doing that. Uh, staffing for DET is a little low right now and we've decided to keep uh, two guys on the weekends and two on the weekdays. So we continue, can continue offering some support seven days a week. Um, but it means we just have fewer officers available. And, and I wanna thank, thank the DAO because they've been great as far as letting us know when they've had major issues. As recently as a couple of days ago, they notified of us of one individual that was causing some pretty serious problems downtown. The good news is we were able to arrest him for drug charges and warrants. Uh, the bad news is the arrest happened yesterday and he was released and causing problems there again today. So as I've ex explained before, we're still dealing with uh, some difficulties with the way the justice system is set up during the COVID pandemic. Uh, we do intend this year to go around as we do every year, normally on Valentine's Day and get the trespass letters out to the businesses. Um, the timing's a little bad as it's uh, coinciding with some major camp operations we'll be doing. So um, if it's okay with uh, Cadence, we can talk offline later. We may have to adjust the date a little bit, but I'd like to work with you on getting those trespass letters updated, um, a regular annual thing. Uh, and then the railroad, for the railroad square folks, I I'm aware of the issues. I've actually met with Mike Montague as well. And I wanna let you guys know um, you are not forgotten. We're aware of the impacts, especially with the camp closing so close to your area. And we are aware of it and we are devoting as much time as we can there. It's just really divided between a number of areas that need attention right now. So no one's getting quite what we would like to offer everybody. 
and I do apologize for that. We're, we're using our resources as best we can with the most significant problems we're experiencing. And I believe that's it. Awesome, thanks, Sergeant. Uh, any questions from council? Um, seeing no questions, Sergeant, I, I did have some questions for you. You mentioned uh, difficulties with the justice system as a result of COVID. Can you expand upon what some of those problems are right now? Uh, absolutely. So the, the jails had to reduce their population pretty extensively um, as a result of the COVID outbreak. Uh, what that means is people that would normally, when we book them, be held are cited out with a court date, absent it being a serious, violent, or sexually related felony in most cases. Um, so we're seeing a lot of people uh, that we arrest who are causing problems for whatever behavior they're engaging in right back on the streets within a few hours. So I know sometimes we even get calls from people who are pretty ticked because they're like, the problem's still going, you came out. And what they don't know is we may have arrested them and they may be back there within a few hours sometimes. So that's some of the impacts we're having. And then a lot of cases are being cleared because there was a backlog and it affected the courts and what type of cases they were willing to put on in their limited capacity. So some people previously that would have been held to uh, a higher sentence, maybe received probation or not even that, or the cases were dismissed. And so we're seeing kind of more of a brazen attitude from some of the people we deal with because they've committed offenses and essentially had few or no consequences. That answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. So when COVID-19 is over, do you feel like you're going to have more enforcement capability than you do currently? Uh, I feel, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm speculating to some extent, but based on what I'm seeing, my concern is less so with the jail because their capacity should increase, but the court's going to be faced with an enormous backlog of cases. And I, I'm just not sure about that second part I described, if some of these cases may be dismissed or what's going to happen with them. So it's kind of tough to tell. Okay, sure. And then my last question is, as you mentioned, staffing issues within the DET. Um, and, and it sounds like there's a need for an additional officer. Will that additional officer help you address some of the issues that are popping up on the Greenway in downtown? Uh, it would, absolutely. It would. And, and on top of that, we've got some injuries that I'm hoping the guys come back here pretty quick. Um, uh, but, but yes, another officer would absolutely assist with our ability to be downtown and at some of the camps that we're dealing with simultaneously. So are you understaffed right now because you have somebody out on, on disability leave or is it because there was a position cut? Uh, well, we had a difficult time. So our staffing is myself and six officers. And with that, we were kind of towing the line. We couldn't meet all the needs, but we can meet more than what we're doing now. With, with the two injuries, it's definitely impacting us. But even prior to that, we, we'd had some discussions because if we deal with a larger camp like we're about to go into, it, it can require as many as 10 or 12 officers so, and a certain number of them need to be from this team because we have certain expertise and some of the legal factors dealing with the homeless. So effectively, when we do those, we don't have anybody available to support the downtown area. And if we did get up over six bodies, that's enough where we could supplement it with patrol staffing and partner one-to-one -to, -one to manage the camps. And it would leave us at least one officer who'd be available to keep an eye on the downtown during that time period. Okay, thanks for that information. That's really helpful because, you know, uh, we recently had a presentation from Chief Navarro where he talked about staffing needs within the police department. So I believe that's going to be coming back at some point. So this will be helpful for the members of council who comp comprise this subcommittee to know about. Um, so I believe uh, we, we've asked the public. Uh, council's had the chance to ask their questions. So I think we'll move on now to item 4.4, maintenance of Courthouse Square. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Good morning, uh, Chairman Tibbetts and Council Member Sawyer and Clemens. Um, I'm I'll introduce myself. Um, I am Tim Finnegan. Um, I'm a crew supervisor for the Parks Department. Um, with the retirement of uh, Dean Hamlin, um, I've been tasked to um, oversee the the entire park system uh, while we work to uh, fill his position. So, um, um, going into this, um, I'm a little bit green and, and learning as I go. Um, I had the the opportunity to uh, meet with the uh, Railroad Square Association, um, uh, as previously mentioned, on um, some of the concerns and so forth with the trees um, and Depot Park. And uh, we were able to, to talk about those items, um, kind of got a, a game plan put together to, to look at, to do some trimming down there on those trees, um, either with um, our internal staff or um, seeing if uh, if we can have our contractor do a little work out down there. So um, we had a great conversation about, the, in general, the park maintenance um, um, in that area, Depot Park. Um, we also talked about um, looking at the, some of the uh, trash receptacles in that area. And um, some work was done on doing some painting and some power washing, uh, cleaning those. Um, also have uh, a few ideas about maybe uh, moving some of those trash receptacles in maybe a little bit better um, areas, um, better um, better areas so the uh, public can throw those away and just makes make make it look a little bit cleaner down there on the on the sidewalks. Um, then uh, we were um, as far as courthouse square stuff. Our crew has been uh, busy with um, doing the leaf cleanup. Now that we're kind of on the tail end of leaf drop, uh, our crews were working hard um, down in Courthouse Square, um, Jeju Way, um, doing a lot of blowing, a lot of cleaning, um, had a, quite a little bit of storm damage with some limbs and so forth that required our, our crew to do some, um, some cleanup in that area. Um, that, so that was all taken care of. So it's looking good down there. Um, looking, um, looking ahead, um, we have our crew scheduled for next week to do some, um, uh, graffiti abatement in the greenway. Uh, we've been putting a plan together with, uh, with, with our senior maintenance worker and, and getting the things that we will need to do that sort of cleaning, uh, that will include, uh, painting. Um, the graffiti on the walls, as well as some power washing and some photo blasting on the sidewalk to try to get that area cleaned up and looking looking good again after um, we had the cleanup there, the homeless cleanup um, that Sergeant Wolf and his team helped us with there last week. So um, I'm kind of excited to see how that's going to turn out. Um, that's such a, a beautiful area. Um, when it's cleaned up and it's usable for our public. So I'm kind of excited to see how that's going to look after uh, next week. Um, looking ahead a little bit, um, we are going to be working with uh, Streets Plus on their uh, receptacles down Courthouse Square, 4th Street, um, downtown area. I'm kind of doing the same thing as we did in uh, the Depot Park area. The railroad square where we're going to be uh, doing some uh, power washing and repainting of those receptacles uh, so looking forward to, um, to that in the future um let's see i think that's all i have um i do appreciate and i uh, please uh be patient with the parks department um i i'm a i'm the only supervisor and you know trying to look over uh, 67 of our parks as well as 18 uh, members of our staff, our crews. Um, I'm just, I'm being stretched a little bit thin and uh, I just uh, appreciate everyone's working with me and introducing themselves to me. Um, but uh, I just ask for your patience and we are um, in the process of refilling that position, that crew supervisor position. Um, it's just uh, taking some time um, with some of the other things going on in the city um, revolved around our our um, 
our employees um, hiring and figuring everything out. So um, I'm glad to be part of, of this committee and um, and working for you guys and doing the best I can to uh, make the city and the downtown area look as best as it can. Thanks, Tim, we appreciate that. Um, it, right now I'm looking up, here's John. Thank you, I, I just wanna say um, thanks, Tim, for the, I mean, it's gotta be, not only is it thankless, but um, it's never ending and you've got to, you know, you have a, like you said, you mentioned how many acres of, of, of park land you have to deal with. And it's very much appreciated, even though it feels like sometimes that it's one step forward and two steps back. You know, it's, it's, we really do appreciate your dedication, uh, especially to our, to the core of our city, um, which is, you know, very important not to underestimate the importance uh, or not to understate the importance of our other parks. But these are the downtown area has its particularly challenging um, areas and very much appreciate your your hard work and the, and the hard work of your staff. And it can't I know it's not easy and uh, I, but I just wanted to voice um, my appreciation. and I'm sure that I am not alone. In, in speaking for the entire council and in, in, in voicing our appreciation for the hard work that you that you and your staff do and what you provide uh, as far as quality of life for our city. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, seeing no other hand, hands raised by the council, uh, let's look to the public for any public comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, seeing no hands raised, um, we'll now move on to item 4.5, Courthouse Square Bollard's project update, and thank you to Tim. And Grant, are you able to see your presentation? I am, yes, thank you. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Great. All right, uh, well, uh, good morning, Chair Tibbetts, uh, Council Members Sawyer and Fleming. Uh, I'm Grant Bailey, Associate Civil Engineer with the Transportation and Public Works Department. Uh, this morning, I'll be providing a uh, project update on the Courthouse Square Bollards project. Uh, and this uh, update is a follow-up update to um, an update we provided in July 2019 on this project. Uh, Today I'll be discussing uh, the project purpose, uh, current the, the timeline, uh, anticipated schedule as we move forward, um, project scope, as well as uh, design and construction considerations. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the purpose of this project is to um, install or replace existing bollards in the square with um, traffic rated bollards to um, uh, you know, mitigate the potential of a, a, a vehicle entering the square. Um, and, and this need was identified, um, you know, upon the completion of the uh, Courthouse Square reunification project, um, because there are two, you know, relatively long straight stretches of uh, roadways in Mendocino Avenue to the north and Santa Rosa Avenue to the south that um, have the potential to allow a vehicle to gain a high rate of speed in a relatively short amount of time. And, um, you know, whether it is by an, inten an intentional act of uh, terrorism or unintentionally, if a vehicle were uh, to enter the square um, at a high rate of speed, there's a significant potential for uh, injury and possible loss of life. Um, and so this, uh, this project will install um, traffic rated bollards that, that should um, stop a vehicle or that will stop a vehicle from entering the square from uh, the north uh, or south approaches um, at Courthouse Square. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so for the project timeline, uh, as I mentioned in 2019, uh, staff provided an update to this uh, subcommittee. Um, at that time, we we're preparing requests for proposals for design build services to um, uh, install traffic rated bollards in the square. Uh, in January 20, 2020, we uh, received two design build proposals. Um, and then in March, 
2020 council awarded uh, this co a contract to M3 Integrated Services of Santa Rosa, California uh, to uh, carry out this project. Um, as you're well aware, you know, in, in March of uh, 2020, the state uh, went into lockdown because of uh, COVID-19. And um, as a result, there were delays to um, finalizing the execution of the contract. Um, but in September of, of uh, 2020, we were able to uh, finalize the contract and you know, begin design work, uh, which leads us into uh, you know, present day, February 2021. Um, we are now uh, we've pretty much completed our design and um, we're looking at finalizing it um, in the next week or two. Um, since the project is a design build uh, project that's been a awarded by council. Uh, we have a short timeline to get to construction. So we're uh, anticipating uh, starting work uh, next month in March. Uh, the project should take about eight weeks uh, between installing the bollards and doing some uh, curb ramp and ADA upgrades. Um, so we're, we're thinking we should be uh, complete about mid-May of this year. Uh, next slide, please. So for the project scope, um, you can see on the screen on the right hand side there, there's a plan view of uh, Courthouse Square. Uh, so the primary scope objective is to install um, two bollard arrays, uh, on the, one on the north side and one on the south side of the square. Um, each array is approximately 85 feet uh, wide and span um, Mendocino Avenue to the north and San Rose Avenue to the south. Um, in, uh, the bollard heights will be uh, 54 inches and they'll be spaced at 60 inches on center. Um, in addition to the, the primary scope objective, um, we're, we'll also be replacing uh, curb ramps um, in the square on the north and south side of the square, as, as well as uh, curb ramps outside of the square on the north side of 4th Street in front of Exchange Bank and uh, 4th Street Deli and on the west side of the square in front of La Rosa restaurant. Uh, next slide, please. So some design considerations. Um, when we kicked off our design phase for this project, we engaged a number of uh, city departments, including planning and economic development, parks, police, fire, and of course, transportation and public works um, to you know, have um, you know, different staff members provide input on um, you know, a variety of options on the ballers. And uh, based on feedback we received, um, the final, um, I guess, appearance of the bollards uh, will have a, a jet black powder coat smooth finish um, with reflective tape um, at the tops of the bollards with a, a, a slant style top. Um, so the bollard appearance should be very much similar to what's shown in the picture here, uh, with the exception of uh, the paint color being black. A um, couple of other really nice features about this project, um, you know, from the beginning, we aimed to maintain the existing appearance of the square as much as possible. And so we wanted to um, replace the existing permeable pavers that are out there. And uh, in working with our designer and the bollard manufacturer, um, we came up with a foundation system that uh, does allow us to replace uh, the, the pavers. So, um, you know, outside of the bollards, um, being replaced or uh, you know being upsized, uh, the visual appearance in the square should um, be pretty well maintained. Another nice feature of this um, bollard foundation system is it's a shallow foundation system, um, which you know really minimizes impacts to existing utilities, and um, you know, as a result, we have uh, virtually no utility relocation um, because of this project. And then um, also the, the major consideration for this project um, was to ensure that we're providing a system that uh, would protect users of the square from a large vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed. Um, and the system that was selected does it does achieve that. Um, and um, you know, in the event that uh, a vehicle attempted to enter the square, uh, this system should only allow a penetration of up to three feet, three feet maximum. Um, next slide, please. So as far as construction considerations, um, we considered uh, 
they're that they're two work areas uh, effectively part of this project um, the bollard work area themselves inside the square and uh, the curb ramps uh, outside of the square on fourth street and on courthouse square west um, and then we also considered traffic control for vehicle traffic and pedestrian traffic and um, how this project would impact the surrounding businesses and residents of the square um, next slide please so to elaborate on my um, some of the points on the previous slide, um, as I mentioned, there are two work areas, uh, the, the bollard work areas themselves inside the square. Um, you can see it's kind of a, a hatched area on the north and south side, but you know, um, outlining that hatched area, there's kind of a heavy dashed line here. Um, that indicates the approximate location of construction fencing, which should um, you know, bar access to the public to the construction site as well as secure the site um, during construction. Uh, also, there's some arrows around that um, around the work areas, uh, which indicate uh, pedestrian detours uh, to ensure that you know uh, pedestrians aren't aren't uh, getting into our, our work site or we're signing appropriately. Um, outside of the, the work area, as mentioned, we'll be replacing. Excuse me, outside of the square. Uh, we'll be replacing curb ramps on the north side of 4th Street, um, as well as on the west side uh, of the square in front of Blue Rosa Restaurant. Um, as far as traffic control goes, uh, we don't anticipate any uh, long-term lane takes required for this project. Uh, however, there will be um, some short-term uh, lane closures uh, to accommodate construction activities, uh, those activities primarily being uh, the concrete pours for the foundation, uh, the Bollard Foundation and uh, concrete curb ramp and curb and gutter replacements. Um, and then for pedestrian traffic control, um, be, since we'll be uh, removing the existing curb ramps uh, on the north and south sides of the square, uh, we'll be preventing access uh, to the square or closing down those access, access points to the square. Um, we will be uh, officially detouring pedestrians to the next closest signalized intersection uh, at B Street and D Street. Um, however, we do anticipate a significant amount of foot traffic will utilize the uh, crosswalks that are unsignalized um, just to the east of the square and shown uh, on the far right hand side of, of this slide. Um, and then, um, you know, just to touch on the surrounding businesses. Um, you know, the project management team at the city and our contractor uh, will be working with the businesses to, to ensure that um, throughout the construction process, we're maintaining access um, to the businesses and, uh, you know, and to residences uh, and, you know, any services that uh, businesses offer, we're going to um, do everything we can to, to ensure that they're maintained in full. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank everyone for their time and open it up to any questions that there may be. Council, any questions? Okay, seeing no questions, um, let's go to public comment. Any questions from the public? There are no hands raised at this time. Okay, uh, last chance for questions or comments from Council. Um, uh, Sergeant Wolf would like to make a comment. Uh, yes, I, I had a quick question, if I may. That three-foot penetration of vehicle, is that for any vehicle or, or is that for like a passenger car size vehicle? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, so it's for a, a larger a vehicle larger than a passenger size car. Um, you know, given the um, kind of nature of the project, I don't, I don't know if we want to go into the actual design vehicle that the, the Bollard Systems um, rated for, um, unless, of course, you'd like me to, and, and I'd happy, I'm happy to, to discuss that, um, the specifics around the design vehicle. Uh, no, just, just the concern was whether it was like a small passenger car or if it would accommodate or stop something a bit heavier in that. No specifics needed. Thank you. Of course, yeah. No problem. Thanks for the question, Sergeant. Um, okay, so seeing no comments from council, uh, thank you, Grant. Um, we're gonna at this time move on to item 4.7, the Imagine Art presentation. 
and it looks like Kim Nadeau will be presenting. Mm -hmm. Pardon, that will actually be Tara Thompson presenting. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Hi there, this is Tara Thompson, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> Great, um, hello Chair Tibbetts and Council Members Sawyer and Fleming. Um, I am here today to provide my normal public art and permitted events update. But I thought I would start off by sharing a visual um, since public art is a visual medium in many cases. Um, so this is the approved artist for the Imagine Art in Courthouse Square project, which I presented to you status updates um, since, uh, gosh, last year or even the year before. It's been a long process to get to this point, but we have um, now a selected and approved um, Blessing Hancock and her design Unum for the north end of Courthouse Square, the large public art project that was um, uh, approved in the master plan for Courthouse Square. Um, so after an extensive selection process that narrowed down over 140 submissions to five finalists, uh, one artist has been approved by the Art and Public Places Committee. Um, Blessing Hancock's design Unum was identified by the project selection panel as the top proposal that best satisfied the goals of the project. Uh, we received an unprecedented number of um, submissions from artists, 140 was our highest number ever, and from that five finalists were invited through a competitive selection process to submit designs. And then the selection panel was very thoughtful and thorough with the entire selection process, especially with this final decision, um, and also took into account the artist's responses to their final selection questions, the public opinion that we gathered through an online survey, um, as well as the stated project criteria. So this piece, Unum, um, it means Latin. It, it, it is Latin for oneness or together, and is a signature artwork that places emphasis on innovation, diversity, and engagement um, as leading values of Santa Rosa. Um, it is inspired uh, by um, the themes that the artists heard through an initial survey we did out to the public about um, being welcoming, being inspirational, and also relaying uh, values of innovation and cultural inclusivity. So you can see the surface has um, engraved, or I should say laser cut uh, words on it, and those words will be collected through a robust community engagement process that will be beginning this spring um, to determine what words and phrases should be on there that speak values inherent to Santa Rosa. During the day, the sculpture will cast shadows onto the words, uh, shadows of the words onto the square using sunlight. And then in the evening, um, LED lights from within will light the piece um, from within, creating a soft diffused glow. Um, this piece will be approximately 12 feet high and 15 feet in diameter and will be made of water, jet cut stainless steel and LED lights. We are looking at a timeline where this piece will be uh, completed and installed next February 2022. Um, that's, that's the only slide, I just wanted to share the slide, the image of this piece. You can learn more about the project, see the other finalist designs if you had not seen them previously on our website, which is srcity.org slash imagine art. Um, that's the website for the project. Um, so the other updates that I have related to the public art program are that um, another exciting kind of step forward for us just last week was the Art and Public Places Committee approved a new strategic plan for fiscal years 21 through 24. Um, and this will be an exciting way for us to oper operationalize some um, public art program initiatives and strategies moving forward for the next three and a half years or so. Um, I will be presenting more on some of the projects that will come out of that at a future meeting. Uh, we also on Monday, um, the 8th, February 8th, will be issuing a new call for artists for a parking garage project on the 5th Street parking garage. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, you can check out our website as well. And, um, and I think that's all I have for public art updates. Um, the only special event updates I have are really just that the permits themselves remain suspended under our current uh, health orders and restrictions. 
Uh, we have permitted the open and out street closures, the continued street closure of the 500 block of 4th Street as a part of the expanded dining space and retail space. Um, but really all other permits are currently suspended. Um, we are starting to get event organizers asking us about events for this summer and fall. And unfortunately, there's not a clear answer to that yet. We're uh, awaiting guidance from the county and state on how to start permitting and when to start permitting large gatherings. But right now we do not have a timeline for that. Uh, that's all I have for today. I am happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Tara. Um, looking at council for any questions, John. Thank you, Chair Tibbetts. And uh, not a question, just a comment. Uh, Tara, what a, you know, what an elegant piece. You know, it's everyone has an opinion on art and you had some really um, great submissions. And I, I this was, um, it was a hard choice when I was looking at them to this and this was in my top two. And I, it, it is, um, it's such a great piece on, on so many levels. Congratulations to the committee that, that had the very difficult job of selecting uh, a piece of artwork. I've, I've, I have sat in that chair before and uh, it can be very, very challenging. And they did a beautiful job. This is, it's a, like I said before, a very elegant piece. I think it will stand the test of time and um, it's right for our times. So um, thank you very much for your effort and I look forward to it. Uh, to its to its uh, placement uh, ultimately in the square. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, Victoria, any questions? No, I my I was just going to echo what uh, John said. It is um, a beautiful piece, and also congratulations to the artist on getting the commission. Look forward to it. Thanks. Um, we'll move to the any public comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Okay, seeing none, we'll bring it back to council for any final questions or comments. Seeing none, thank you, Tara. Appreciate the update. Great, thank you so much. Um, so now I believe we'll move on to item 4.7, the parking program update. Yes, good morning. Um, Everyone and welcome Chair Tibbetts to this committee. Um, I have a brief update for you. Uh, we had seen a gradual uptick in parking activity for the downtown, um, starting with the resumption of paid parking in July. And then with the, um, the new restrictions that went into effect in December, of course, we saw a corresponding dip in activity um, and with the, the resumption of outdoor dining, we've already in, in a week seen um, people coming back downtown and seeing uh, increased activity. So that's good news. Um, we are seeing revenues down uh, about 50% year over year, which is not a surprise. And actually I'm pleased to report that in comparison to similar cities, we are actually doing better than a lot of cities who are seeing 60 and 65% drops in their revenue. So I'm happy about that. I did want to remind um, folks that we are offering free parking options. We have the first hour free in all five of our garages. We've got free parking after five o'clock, Monday through Friday in all of the garages, and all of the garages are free all day on Saturday and Sunday. So we are offering many options for folks to, to park at, uh, well, at no cost. <laughs> And we also have some garage construction underway. You may, if you are parking in the garages, you may see that there's uh, work underway right now. We're in the D Street garage. This is primarily um, sealing cracks to keep water out of the facilities to extend their useful life. And that work will be going on for uh, several more months at all of the garages except for the Third Street garage. And then lastly, I just wanted to say that I am I'm really excited to be working with Tara on that new art project for the Fifth Street Garage. The um, purpose of this besides being aesthetically pleasing and um, you know, making the garage more attractive, it's also to help people in wayfinding um, to understand that that garage is there. It's kind of hidden behind redwood trees. And so we're looking at the corner of Orchard and Fifth Street, which people can see from 4th Street and D. 
And so we're hoping that this project will kind of serve multiple purposes in making people more aware that that uh, large garage is there and very close to 4th Street Core. So that's what I've got for you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Kim. Um, any questions from council? Seeing none, we'll move on to public comment on item 4.7. There are no there are no hands raised at this time. Okay, seeing no hands, we'll bring it back to council. Seeing no hands, we'll move on to item five, matters held in committee. Um, and thank you, uh, Kim. And there are no matters held in committee. Okay, uh, item six, department reports. There also seems to be no additional reports. Okay, good stuff. Well, um, so we're at the end of our meeting. So uh, I guess I'll go ahead and adjourn. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.